Now, this was uh, kindly introduced earlier, which was the uh, International uh, Classification of Function, Disability and Health. This has uh, come from the World Health Organization from their paper Towards a Common Language for Functioning, Disability and Health, which really tried to move the discussion away from a focus on, it, on uh, disability more to a focus on ability. And I noticed there's some good sessions already lined up for that uh, tomorrow, both morning and afternoon. I just briefly wanted to say, I mean, basically it's saying, as we alluded to earlier, that it isn't the diagnosis per se, it's a number of, of factors, the personal factors, the environmental factors, how it impacts on your, on your body function, what activity you do, whether you're able to participate. Uh, and those are, are a collective number of things. And at an individual level, it's about what is their level of functioning. How do they rate themselves? What interventions might maximise their functioning and how useful and what are the outcomes of those interventions? At an institutional level, this means what services will be needed. How well do we serve our clients and how cost effective are the services? Uh, as indicated earlier, just throwing money at it wouldn't necessarily be helpful. But at a social level, what are the criteria, are the criteria for the eligibility for disability ben benefits actually evidence-based? Are they appropriate to our social goals and are they actually justifiable? Which I think, all of which are different questions. What are the needs of a person with a certain level of disability and how do we incorporate what I've called reasonable accommodation to make our environments more accessible for all persons? And can we assess and measure whether that makes a difference? The determinants of health, uh, this is my favourite slide I like to show to uh, my medical colleagues and remind them that there are, there are only one little part of what makes people healthy. I actually would like to sit back to say health and well-being, I must admit. The others are terribly important and, you know, whether, whether you get to see the doc or not might be useful, but it needs all the other factors as well. The non-medical factors, clearly there are other factors involved. Uh, but these are some of the factors that do have an impact, according to a number of the papers that have been written, on doctor factors and whether, um, <coughs> on whether people stay on a benefit or not. So what can we do? It sounds like I'm being uh, a bit uh, negative. I actually think we can be quite optimistic. I think there is, I think this forum has the, op not the forum, not just the forum, but the working group has the opportunity to create uh, a different environment. I think the environment is changing. I think there is a willingness to say, how do you facilitate a return to work where work is possible, but it needs to be suitable work. I deliberately outlined that. We need to be able to, and I think the top bit to encourage an expectation to return to work is in fact quite important. It's actually empowering the person to consider that. I thought the, the real emphasis on, on Dame uh, Eritana's um, comments about you know, enabling people, empowering and enabling people to make decisions for themselves. There's too much of what can we do to somebody rather than what, what can we do to be the support person. And that involves needing to monitor, does the, does the support need to change? Make sure that information is available on what sorts of rehabilitation and the importance of remaining as active as possible. You really need to look at what those non-medical factors are, because they will be at least as important as any medical ones. The active management approach really is that sort of um, the idea of medical recovery and uh, work recovery going in tandem with each other. Of course, I wouldn't be allowed to get away with a presentation from work in, as a work and income, the person who pays my uh, bill, without saying this is actually the current uh, vision for work and income, which work matters, but in the end, people count. There are 4,500 people work for work and income, and none of them would keep coming to work if they didn't think they would make an, a difference to someone's life. You don't go to work to beat people up, unless you're a bouncer I suppose, but certainly not in working income. You wouldn't stay in that sort of job for long and I think this, this is an increasing emphasis and it's getting the facilities to be able to enable people to access that. And I'd just like to close on a very old quote which I believe is at the core of 
both general practice but also uh, enabling people to fulfil their best, uh, uh, you know, their, their um, fulfil their abilities and potential. It is the person and not what's wrong with them that's actually the issue. I'm happy to answer more questions a little later, but I'd like to hand over to Kevin now. Thank you.